FR protection was met with NFPA 2112 standards were adopted for the laboratory uh, worker, but there really wasn't uh, any concentration addressed to resistance to, to liquids, stopping liquids from penetrating, stopping liquids from going through uh, these lab coats. So it makes it very complicated when you think about what the, the status quo is. How do you make your choices as to what's the proper attire for laboratory workers? Uh, in some cases, that's an FR lab coat. Nomex 3A is the desired solution uh, by the University of California system. In some cases, though, you might be working with pyrophoric materials, be working with liquids that, um, uh, that are deemed particularly hazardous. And for those examples, you would use a, a fluid-resistant coat. But it's, uh, you have an FR solution or you have a, a non-FR solution. Um, what's right, that's determined by the researcher, by the LHAT system. Um, some cases, you might combine a rubber apron with your FR lab coat. Sometimes you don't have an FR coat, just a, a poly cotton, and sometimes you wear an uh, apron with it or not. So it's very confusing. Many choices, very operationally complex for uh, understanding what are the right policies for the people purchasing these coats. Um, and there's really an increased risk of improper use. So make sure that you're wearing the proper PPE and wearing it correctly. And that's really, when you think about a lab coat as PPE, that's been a real change that's come about. And Ken's really led the way of thinking about a lab coat as just something you wear to look professional in a laboratory environment, because doctors do it, to something that can really protect you from the chemicals you're working with. So an ideal lab coat for most chemistry labs uh, would need to have these three properties. It needs to be flame resistant, because many of the chemicals you're working with are flammable. You have open flames in a lot of these environments. It needs to be chemically resistant, and we can talk more about what exactly that means. And it needs to be comfortable, so that someone can wear that on a day in, day, day out basis, and it's good daily wear for them. So the, the product I'm going to tell you about, it's, it's based around Nomex 3A. This um, has life of the garment protection. This is DuPont fiber. We purchase fiber and then turn that into fabric, which we then sell on to a, a garment manufacturer. But this fabric goes beyond those FR um, components. FR is very important, but you expand your thinking to what does the laboratory worker need. They're exposed to corrosive liquids, toxic liquids, and flammable liquids on a routine basis when you work in a laboratory. And so you want a coat that's more than just a simple barrier, more than just an absorptive layer, as Ken, Ken mentioned. You want something that offers protection against each one of those um, each one of those hazards. So I'm going to tell you about, we developed um, in my lab with, with my coworkers and, and development team, we developed a, a patent pending technology that endows the Nomex 3A fibers with this type of resistance. And it's best demonstrated in videos. So the most corrosive chemical I can think of that I worked with at UCLA and we work with it at Millikan is, is a mixture called Piranha Solution. If, you're familiar with it, it's a mixture of sulfuric acid and hydrogen peroxide. And when you mix this material up, it immediately starts boiling. Here's the sulfuric acid uh, being poured. This recipe is three parts sulfuric acid to one part hydrogen peroxide. It's a very common, most common recipe. And we're going to pour this on the fabric on the left. It pools, it doesn't go through, it resists penetration. When you pour this on a typical Nomex 3A, it immediately burns through. So this is, again, a very common exposure that you would come in contact with. And really, wearing face shields, wearing uh, appropriate eyewear is, is recommended. But there wasn't a, uh, in many cases, there isn't appropriate respect to what you should be wearing on your body. There's very common experience in a laboratory is you're working with many different types of solvents. And these solvents could be toxic. They could be um, carrying a toxin agent dissolved in them. So this is an example where we created these challenge chemicals, water, various alcohols, DMSO, DMF, acetonitrile, and toluene. We're using this micropipette to, to apply all of them at one time. When the dye is 
combined with those, you see that it goes straight through a traditional lab coat material, this is FR, into an undergarment. So the undergarment was just a, a white polycotton. So everything goes through, it wicks, every one of those solvents wicks through, and it is driven to the underlayer. That could be your garment or your bare skin. So if there's anything toxic dissolved in that material, it would go straight in. Everything is rolling off the surface. It's repelled. This is at a 45 degree angle, which is mimics how it would be worn in the field. And you have nothing goes through to the backside. So you have protection and resistance against those types of chemicals and those types of uh, solvents. So the way we've thought about this material, and, and we had to understand exactly what we wanted in that lab coat. We needed the comfort, but we also needed good chemical resistance. And you can think about chemical resistance and comfort as two opposing um, uh, axes on a graph. And if you want to have really good liquid and gas uh, chemical resistance, you need a complete barrier protection. And this is typical in the marketplace in, in hazmat suits. Uh, that's not really what you want to wear every day working in the lab because it's, then you start worrying about heat stroke issues. You want something that you can wear every day that's appropriate for the hazard that you're facing, which uh, those examples we've, we've demonstrated as a practicing organic chemist um, it, are, are commensurate with the type of uh, hazards that you're facing. And so the West Texas has second, what we're calling secondary chemical protection. It is prevents inadvertent, inadvertent chemical splash hazards. And it's very comfortable. And we can talk more about the comfort. We actually have samples back here that you can feel. It's comfortable in a couple of ways. Probably the most important that the wear feels is air permeability. It has very high air permeability, 200 cubic feet per minute, um, uh, which when you compare that to other Nomex coats, it's actually even better. So it has very good breathability, so you're not going to get very hot in it. It also bends. It has a nice drape, a low bending modulus, uh, which is uh, what you want, really. So this makes it feel good, makes it feel more like a cotton, not a, not a traditional type uh, of stiff uh, material. So when we showed this to various people, we reached out to Ken, we reached out to my old professor at UCLA, Craig Merlick, who is actually, uh, will introduce himself in this next video. He was uh, really blown away with his coat. My name is Craig Merlick. I'm an associate professor of chemistry at UCLA. So I've been a professor here at UCLA for 27 years, and I've always had a longstanding interest in safety besides being the chair of the safety committee for the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. I'm also the chair of the campus-wide chemical and physical safety committee, and I also serve on the safety oversight committee for the campus as a whole. A lab coat plays a very important role in laboratory safety. The principal action the lab coat provides is a barrier between the researcher and chemicals, but they don't provide protection against uh, liquid materials. In particular, there's not a great level of splash protection and also the current lab coats wick chemicals, and that's a hazard to the researchers. To provide splash protection, uh, students can put on a chemical resistant apron over the lab coats. The challenge, though, is that it's awkward having two layers of personal protective equipment on, and the second issue is that the aprons don't provide full coverage of the body for protection. This new coat um, is the latest generation, and I have seen experiments and have participated in experiments with this coat and it is truly remarkable. The material does not wick chemicals, chemicals instead just roll off it. In terms of chemical resistance, the new lab coat is also remarkable because it also is very resistant for corrosive chemicals. So the new coat would provide an amazing level of protection for researchers who might have very corrosive materials spilled on them. So I look at this new material as being absolutely transformative and a real game changer in terms of laboratory safety. So as we developed this material, we needed to understand exactly how to understand its performance. And some of you might have questions about how we do the ratings and rankings of this material and make it better. And particularly, we utilize uh, 
a rating system of droplets of challenge chemicals put on this material. And when we compare that to a, what's known here as current, that's the current Nomex coats, every chemical you, you apply to it will wick straight in. It gets a D rating where everything goes into this material. When you do the new coat, four and a half ounce with this set of challenge chemicals, we have A's and B ratings for the most part. When we get down into the, the oils, the heptanes of the world, where they become uh, more challenging for this material. When you expand this list just a little bit and, and start categorizing your, your solvents that we're working with, um, you can see corrosive liquids, whether they be sulfuric acid, hydrochloric, uh, sodium hydroxide mixtures, they are all um, repelled very well. We have these A ratings. When we have strong oxidizers, corrosive liquids, nitric acids, uh, piranha solution, as you saw, uh, hydrogen peroxide, uh, these have good ratings as well. Uh, polar organic solvents behave very, behave very well. They are uh, repelled from the surface and it resists penetration. Uh, when you get to the non-polar organic solvents, that is a limitation uh, and, and is a, an area that uh, those have the, the D ratings. So just to be clear on, on what to expect and what, how this coat performs. There's been a lot of questions around wash durability of this material, and we've done extensive wash testing at various wash temperatures, whether it be 120 degrees, uh, this is the wash water temperature, up to an industrial uh, aggressive 160 degrees. And these are the performance ratings, A and Bs, of a range of uh, this challenge set of, uh, of test chemicals. And there's no degradation in the performance up to 50 washes. And so if you look at the wash data of a typical laboratory coat, this is many years of service of this material. So we've very excited about this product. Uh, we have uh, this website if you want to learn more about it. And we're working with Workrite, who has a booth back here that uh, you can learn more about the actual lab coats out of it.